Staple foods make up the main part of a diet, providing most of the energy and nutrients needed. People eat these foods daily or several times a day. Factors like culture, climate and trade influence which foods are popular. Despite over 50,000 edible plants, only a few play a significant role in human food supply. Now, let's explore a quick history of the most crucial staple foods throughout human civilization. Maize, a tall grass producing cereal grain, relies on human intervention for propagation. Unlike its wild ancestor, Teosinte, whose kernels fall off naturally, domesticated maize requires assistance. Originating from a single domestication in southern Mexico around 9,000 years ago, the oldest maize varieties come from the Mexican highlands. From there, maize spread across the Americas along two major routes. The Balsas River Valley in south-central Mexico is believed to be the center of domestication. Maize reached highland Ecuador over 8,000 years ago, lower Central America by 7,600 years ago, and the Colombian Andes Valleys between 7,000 and 6,000 years ago. Initially, early maize plants produced a single small ear per plant. The Olmec and Maya cultivated various maize varieties across Mesoamerica, using nixtamalization for cooking and processing. By 3,000 years ago, maize was central to Olmec culture, influencing their calendar, language and myths. In pre-Hispanic times, the Mapuche people of south-central Chile grew maize alongside quinoa and potatoes. Before the expansion of the Inca Empire, Maize was traded and transported as far south as 40 degree S in Melinquina, La Car department, likely brought across the Andes from Chile. Since the arrival of Europeans in 1492, Spanish settlers consumed maize and explorers and traders introduced it to Europe. However, maize faced challenges in Europe as Spanish settlers preferred wheat bread over maize. Maize flour couldn't replace wheat for communion bread as only wheat could undergo transubstantiation in Christian belief. Despite this, maize spread worldwide due to its adaptability to diverse climates. It was cultivated in Spain shortly after Columbus's voyages and then introduced to Italy, West Africa and other regions. By the 17th century, it became a common food among southern European peasants. By the 18th century, it was a staple for the southern French and Italian peasantry, especially as polenta in Italy. When maize was integrated into Western farming, it was praised for its productivity. However, widespread malnutrition emerged wherever maize became a staple. Indigenous Americans had long practiced nixtamalization, soaking maize in alkali water to liberate the corn hulls and release niacin, a B vitamin. This process was key to preventing pellagra, a disease caused by niacin deficiency. With the understanding and application of alkali processing and dietary diversity, Pellagra disappeared in developed countries. The development of high lysine maize and the promotion of a balanced diet further contributed to its eradication. Nonetheless, pellagra persists in food-poor areas and refugee camps reliant on donated maize. Oriza sativa rice was initially cultivated in the Yangtze River Basin in China between 13,500 to 8,200 years ago. The critical indicator of domestication in grains, the non-shattering allele, along with five other single nucleotide polymorphisms, is identical in both Indica and Japonica varieties, suggesting a single domestication event for O. sativa. Both Indica and Japonica rice varieties originated from a single domestication event in China, from wild rice Oriza rufipogon. Despite this, it's believed that indica rice emerged when japonica rice arrived in India around 4,500 years ago and hybridized with another rice, possibly an undomesticated proto-indica, or wild Orisa nivara. Rice cultivation, along with migration and trade, facilitated its spread across the globe. Initially, rice spread to much of East Asia and then to other regions, eventually reaching the Americas through the Columbian Exchange after 1492. Another variety, Oriza glaberima, also known as African rice, was independently domesticated in Africa approximately 3,000 years ago. It was later introduced to the Americas by the Spanish, although it is now less common compared to Oriza sativa. Today, rice, belonging to the Oriza species, feeds over half of the world's population and contributes to 20% of the global calorie intake. 
Beyond being a dietary staple, rice plays a crucial role in the economy and landscape of East Asian, Southeast Asian and South Asian civilizations, both ancient and modern. Unlike Mediterranean cultures, which primarily rely on wheat bread, Asian culinary traditions, food textures and ceremonial feasting revolve around rice consumption. Rice cultivation spans across every continent except Antarctica, encompassing 21 wild varieties and three distinct cultivated species. Arisa sativa japonica, domesticated in central China around 7,000 years BCE, and Arisa sativa indica, domesticated or hybridized in the Indian subcontinent around 2500 BCE, are two prominent cultivated species. Additionally, Oriza glabarima, domesticated or hybridized in West Africa between 1500 and 800 BCE, adds to the diversity of rice cultivation worldwide. The oldest known evidence of rice consumption dates back to four grains found in the Yuchanyan cave in China's Hunan province. Scholars suggest these grains may represent early forms of domestication, showing characteristics of both japonica and sativa. The Yuchanyan site, associated with the Upper Paleolithic incipient Jomon culture, dates between 12,000 and 16,000 years ago. In the sediment deposits of Diotongguan Cave near Poyang Lake, rice phytoliths, some identifiable as japonica, were found dating back around 10,000 to 9,000 years before present. Further testing of lake sediments revealed rice phytoliths present in the valley before 12,820 before present. While some argue that these occurrences represent rice consumption or use in pottery temper, they're not necessarily evidence of domestication. Oriza sativa japonica evolved from Oriza rufipogon, a low-yielding rice native to swampy regions, requiring intentional manipulation of water and salt. The timing and location of this domestication remain debated, with four regions considered possible, the Middle Yangtze, the Huai River, the Huli culture of Shandong, and the Lower Yangtze River Valley. Most scholars lean towards the Lower Yangtze as the likely origin, coinciding with the end of the Younger Dryas period. Early evidence for the use of wild Oriza rufipogon has been found at sites like Shangshan and Jiahu, where ceramic vessels tempered with rice chaff were discovered, dating between 8,000 to 7,000 BCE. Direct dating of rice grains at sites like Shangshan and Hehuashan suggests rice cultivation as early as 9,400 and 9,000 years before the present, respectively. By around 5,000 BCE, domesticated japonica was widespread in the Yangtze Valley, with sites like Tongjian Luojiajiao and Hamuda showing large amounts of rice kernels. By 6,000 to 3,500 BCE, rice cultivation and other Neolithic lifestyle changes spread throughout southern China, reaching Southeast Asia by 3,000 to 2,000 BCE. The domestication process was gradual, likely spanning from 7,000 to 100 BCE. Chinese archaeologists, led by Yongchao Ma, identified three stages in this process, with rice slowly evolving to become a staple part of local diets by around 2500 BCE, marked by changes such as rice fields outside of wetlands and non-shattering rachis. While scholars have largely reached a consensus on the origins of rice in China, the subsequent spread of rice beyond the Yangtze Valley remains a topic of debate. It's widely accepted that Oriza sativa japonica, domesticated from Oriza rufipogon in the lower Yangtze River Valley around 9,000 to 10,000 years ago, serves as the origin for all rice varieties. Scholars have proposed at least 11 different routes for rice's spread across Asia, Oceania and Africa. On at least two occasions, scholars suggest a manipulation of japonica rice occurred, once in the Indian subcontinent around 2500 BCE and again in West Africa between 1500 and 800 BCE. India and Indonesia have been focal points of debate regarding the introduction and domestication of rice. Some argue that rice in these regions came directly from China as Oriza sativa japonica, while others propose that Oriza indica rice is unrelated to japonica and was independently domesticated from Oriza nivara. Another theory suggests Oriza indica is a hybrid of fully domesticated Oriza japonica and a semi-domesticated or local wild version of Oriza nivara. Unlike Oriza japonica, Oriza nivara can be exploited on a large scale 
without significant cultivation or habitat alteration. The earliest rice agriculture in the Ganges likely involved dry cropping, relying on monsoonal rains and seasonal flood recession for water. Evidence suggests the earliest irrigated paddy rice in the Ganges dates back to at least the end of the second millennium BCE, if not earlier. In the Indus Valley, Oriza japonica appeared by at least 2400 to 2200 BCE and became prevalent in the Ganges region around 2000 BCE. However, evidence from sites like Senua indicates rice cultivation, likely of dryland Oriza nivara, was already underway by 2500 BCE. Continued interaction with China is evidenced by crop introductions like peach, apricot, broomcorn millet and cannabis, as well as the use of Longshan-style harvest knives in the Kashmir and Swat regions after 2000 BCE. While Thailand initially received domesticated rice from China, archaeological data suggests that by around 300 BCE, the dominant type shifted to Ariza indica, influenced by contact with India. This led to the adoption of wetland rice farming systems and invention of Chinese farmers in India. A third domestication or hybridization event occurred during the African Iron Age in the Niger Delta region of West Africa, resulting in the creation of Orisa glabarima by crossing Orisa sativa with Orisa bathi. The earliest evidence of rice cultivation in this region dates back to between 1800 to 800 BCE with ceramic impressions of rice grains found in Ganjigana, northeast Nigeria. The documented domestication of Arisa glabarima was first identified at Genageno in Mali, dating between 300 BCE and 200 BCE. Plant geneticist Philippe Kubri and colleagues suggest that the domestication process likely began around 3,200 years ago, coinciding with the expansion of the Sahara which made the wild form of rice increasingly difficult to find. In West Asia, hunter-gatherers harvested wild wheats for thousands of years before their domestication, possibly as early as 21,000 BC, although they formed only a minor part of their diets. This pre-domestication cultivation phase lasted for at least a millennium, during which early cultivars were spread across the region and gradually developed the traits that would characterise their domesticated forms. The repeated harvesting and sowing of wild grass grains led to the creation of domestic strains as mutant forms of wheat became more suitable for cultivation. In domesticated wheat, grains are larger and the seeds remain attached to the ear by a toughened rachis during harvesting, unlike in wild strains where a more fragile rachis allows the ear to shatter easily, dispersing the spikelets. Selection for larger grains and non-shattering heads likely occurred because these traits made gathering the seeds easier, although such incidental selection played a crucial role in crop domestication. As the traits that improve wheat as a food source involve the loss of the plant's natural seed dispersal mechanisms, highly domesticated strains of wheat cannot survive in the wild. Wild einkorn wheat, native to Southwest Asia, comprises three distinct races, with only one being domesticated. The main feature distinguishing domestic einkorn from wild is its non-shattering ears, making it dependent on humans for dispersal and reproduction. Wild einkorn was collected at sites such as Tel Abu Huraira and Muribet, but the earliest archaeological evidence for the domestic form comes from southern Turkey, around 8800 BC. Genetic evidence suggests that einkorn was domesticated independently in multiple places. Wild emma wheat, less widespread than einkorn, is found in the hilly flanks of the Fertile Crescent. Domesticated emma varieties fall into two major groups, hulled or non-shattering, and free threshing. While both varieties likely existed in prehistory, free threshing cultivars became more common over time. Wild emma was first cultivated in the southern Levant, around 9,600 BC, with evidence of domestication found in southeastern Anatolia. The earliest secure archaeological evidence for domestic emma comes from sites like Kayonu, around 8,300 to 7,600 BC. Einkorn and emma are considered two of the founder crops cultivated by the first farming societies in Neolithic West Asia. Alongside these, communities also cultivated naked wheats 
and a now extinct domesticated form of zanduri wheat, along with various other cereal and non-cereal crops. While barley predominated in the early Neolithic, wheat became a staple after around 8,500 BC. Early wheat cultivation required minimal labour. Farmers initially enclosed fields against grazing animals and re-sowed stands after harvesting, without systematically removing vegetation or tilling the soil. They might have also practised decrew farming, sowing seeds in soil left behind by receding flood water. Wheat was harvested using stone-bladed sickles. The ease of storing wheat led farming households to rely on it more over time, especially after developing individual storage facilities capable of holding more than a year's supply. Wheat grain was stored after threshing, with the chaff removed, and then processed into flour using ground stone mortars. Bread made from ground einkorn and the tubers of a form of club rush, Bolboscanus glaucus, dates back to 12,400 BC. At Katalhoyuk, around 7,100 to 6,000 BC, both whole grain wheat and flour were used to prepare bread, porridge and gruel. Besides food, wheat may have been important to Neolithic societies as a source of straw for fuel, wicker making or construction. Domestic wheat quickly spread to regions where its wild ancestors did not naturally grow. Emma was introduced to Cyprus around 8,600 BC, while Einkorn arrived around 7,500 BC. Emma reached Greece by 6,500 BC, Egypt shortly after 6,000 BC, and Germany and Spain by 5,000 BC. The early Egyptians were pioneers of bread and oven use, developing baking into one of the first large-scale food production industries. By 4000 BC, wheat had reached the British Isles and Scandinavia, while it likely appeared in China's Lower Yellow River around 2600 BC. The oldest evidence for hexaploid wheat, confirmed through DNA analysis of wheat seeds, dates back to around 6400 to 6200 BC, recovered from Katalhoyuk. The earliest wheat with sufficient gluten for yeasted breads was found in a granary at Assyros in Macedonia, dated to 1350 BC. From the Middle East, wheat continued spreading across Europe and to the Americas during the Columbian Exchange. In the British Isles, wheat straw was commonly used for roofing from the Bronze Age until the late 19th century. White wheat bread was initially a high status food, but became mass consumed in Britain during the 19th century, displacing oats, barley and rye from diets in the north. It became a symbol of cultural refinement. Wild populations of Manihot Escalenta subspecies Flabellifolia, believed to be the progenitor of domesticated cassava, are centred in west-central Brazil, where it was likely first domesticated around 10,000 years ago. Modern domesticated forms can also be found growing in the wild in the south of Brazil, by 4,600 BC, cassava pollen appears in the Gulf of Mexico lowlands at the San Andres archaeological site. The oldest direct evidence of cassava cultivation comes from a 1,400-year-old Maya site, Joya de Querin, in El Salvador. With its high food potential, cassava had become a staple food of native populations in northern South America, southern Mesoamerica, and the Taino people in the Caribbean islands by the time of European contact in 1492. It was often portrayed in indigenous art, with the Moche people frequently depicting yucca in their ceramics. Early Spaniards in the Caribbean islands did not favour cassava or maize, considering them insubstantial and not nutritious. They preferred foods from Spain like wheat bread, olive oil, red wine and meat, deeming maize and cassava damaging to Europeans. However, cassava cultivation and consumption persisted in both Portuguese and Spanish America. Mass production of cassava bread became the first Cuban industry established by the Spanish, as ships departing to Europe from Cuban ports carried goods, including cassava bread, for provisions. Cassava was introduced to Africa by Portuguese traders from Brazil in the 16th century, and to Asia, through the Colombian exchange by Portuguese and Spanish traders. It became an important staple food in Africa, replacing native crops in some regions, and gained significance in Asia for starch extraction and biofuel production. Cassava is sometimes referred to as the bread of the tropics, 
but its consumption varies across regions. In South America and Africa, it is a valued food staple, while in Asian countries such as Vietnam, it is primarily cultivated for non-food purposes. Soybean, Glycine Max, is believed to have been domesticated from its wild relative Glycine Soja in China between 6,000 and 9,000 years ago, although the specific region remains unclear. Wild soybeans are found throughout East Asia, extending into neighboring regions like the Russian Far East, the Korean Peninsula, and Japan. The process of soybean domestication was likely slow, possibly taking place over 1,000 to 2,000 years. Wild soybeans grow as creepers with many lateral branches and have a longer growing season compared to the domesticated version. They produce tiny black seeds and pods that shatter easily, promoting seed dispersal over long distances. Domesticated soybeans, on the other hand, are smaller, bushier plants with upright stems. Cultivars, like edamame, have erect and compact stem architecture, high harvest percentages, and high seed yield. Ancient farmers bred traits such as pest and disease resistance, increased yield, improved quality, male sterility, and fertility restoration into domesticated soybeans. However, wild beans remain more adaptive to a wider range of natural environments and are resistant to drought and salt stress. The earliest documented evidence for the use of glycine comes from charred plant remains of wild soybeans recovered from Jiahu in Henan Province, China, a Neolithic site occupied between 9,000 and 7,800 years ago. DNA-based evidence for soybeans has been found in early Jomon component levels of Sanai Mariyama, Japan, around 4,800 to 3,000 BC. Beans from Torihama, in the Fukui Prefecture of Japan, were dated to 5,000 years before the present, indicating the presence of domesticated soybeans. The middle Jomon site of Shimoyakebe had soybeans, one of which was dated to between 4,890 to 4,960 years before the present. These soybeans, considered domestic based on their size, indicate the early presence and use of domesticated soybeans in ancient cultures. The earliest historical evidence for soybean use dates back to the Shang dynasty, with reports written sometime between 1700 to 1100 BC. During this time, whole beans were cooked or fermented into a paste and used in various dishes. By the Song dynasty, 960 to 1280 AD, soybeans saw an explosion of uses. In the 16th century AD, they spread throughout Southeast Asia. The first recorded mention of soybeans in Europe appears in Carolus Linnaeus's Hortus Cliffortianus, compiled in 1737. Initially, Soybeans were grown for ornamental purposes in England and France. In 1804, Yugoslavia began cultivating soybeans as a supplement in animal feed. The first documented use of soybeans in the United States occurred in 1765 in Georgia, marking the beginning of their cultivation and utilization in American agriculture and cuisine. The potato was the first domesticated vegetable in the region of modern-day southern Peru and extreme northwestern Bolivia, with cultivation dating back to between 8,000 and 5,000 BC. Although potato cultivation in South America may stretch back 10,000 years, identifying tubers in the archaeological record is challenging. The earliest confirmed potato tuber remains were discovered at the coastal site of Ancon in central Peru, dating to 2500 BC. In addition to physical remains, the potato is depicted in Peruvian archaeological records, often influencing the design of ceramic pottery. From its origins in South America, the potato spread worldwide and became a staple crop in many countries. It arrived in Europe before the end of the 16th century through two different ports of entry, first in Spain around 1570, and then via the British Isles between 1588 and 1593. The earliest written mention of the potato is a delivery receipt dated the 28th of November, 1567, between Las Palmas de Gran Canaria and Antwerp. In France, by the late 16th century, the potato had been introduced to regions like Franche-Comte, the Vosges of Lorraine and Alsace. 
By the late 18th century, it was widely embraced, as evidenced by the 1785 edition of Bon Jardinier, which stated, There is no vegetable about which so much has been written and so much enthusiasm has been shown. The poor should be quite content with this foodstuff. By the 19th century, the potato had largely replaced turnips and rutabagas in Europe. The potato's popularity in Europe soared in the 19th century due to its advantages over other foods, including its lower rate of spoilage, bulkiness, which easily satisfied hunger, and affordability. It gradually became a major staple across Europe, particularly in Ireland, where it played a crucial role in the diet. Sorghum, a resilient cereal essential for subsistence in many regions, has a long and storied history spanning thousands of years. Originating in the heart of Africa, sorghum was domesticated around 8000 BCE in Ethiopia and Sudan, where it became a vital food source. One of sorghum's remarkable traits is its ability to thrive in diverse environments, requiring little water and growing well in all soil types. Evidence of sorghum cultivation dates back to the 7th century BCE in Egypt, as depicted in wall paintings and revealed through archaeological excavations. The Silk Road played a pivotal role in spreading sorghum to the Middle East India and eventually to China by the 2nd century BCE. Pliny the Elder's writings further confirm its presence in Rome during the early Christian era. During the Age of Exploration, Sorghum found its way to the New World in the 16th century through the efforts of great explorers. However, it is believed that sorghum may have also been transported from Guinea to the American colonies in the 17th century, contributing to its presence in the Western Hemisphere. The name sorghum, derived from the Italian sorghum and the Latin suricum granum, meaning Syrian grain, reflects the cereal's journey through time and across continents, Sorghum is known by various names in different regions, including Great Millet in Africa, Egyptian Wheat in the Middle East, and Indian Millet in Asia. These diverse names mirror the contrasting environmental conditions in the countries where sorghum was domesticated and cultivated, leading to the development of a wide array of sorghum varieties. The sweet potato, scientifically known as Ipomoea batatas, is a root crop believed to have been first domesticated somewhere between the Orinoco River in Venezuela and the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. While the oldest discovered sweet potato, dating back to around 8000 BCE, was found in the Tres Ventanas cave in Peru, it is thought to have been a wild form. Recent genetic research suggests that Ipomoea trifida, native to Colombia, Venezuela and Costa Rica, is the closest living relative of I. batatas and may be its progenitor. The earliest remains of domesticated sweet potatoes in the Americas were unearthed in Peru, dating back to around 2500 BCE. In Polynesia, there is compelling evidence of pre-Columbian sweet potato cultivation. Remains have been discovered in the Cook Islands by 1000 to 1100 CE, Hawaii by 1290 to 1430 CE, and Easter Island by 1525 CE. Moreover, sweet potato pollen, phytoliths, and starch residues have been identified in agricultural plots alongside maize in South Auckland, further supporting its widespread cultivation and consumption in various regions. The transmission of the sweet potato across the globe was primarily facilitated by European colonial powers, such as the Spanish and Portuguese, who obtained it from South Americans and introduced it to Europe. However, the arrival of sweet potatoes in Polynesia predates European contact by several centuries, presenting a puzzle for scholars. While it's possible that the seeds of the potato were transported to Polynesia by birds like the golden plover, which regularly migrate across the Pacific, another theory suggests accidental raft drift by lost sailors from the South American coast. A recent computer simulation study lends support to the raft drift hypothesis, indicating that it is a plausible scenario for the transportation of sweet potatoes to Polynesia.